So before we begin, it is important to understand that any time you work with gear, line, and tackle on a vessel, it carries with it an inherent risk of serious injury. We at Field School have extensive experience with the handling and working of this gear, and so we encourage our viewers to receive the proper training and practice before implementing any of these techniques. Our gear is designed with animal welfare in mind and is approved for the use by the proper permitting agencies. Hi, Christian here with Field School, and today we're going to be talking about scientific long lines, or at least the long line methods we use here doing our own shark research. Now, you probably have heard about long lines from the commercial fishing industry, or even popular maritime disaster movies like The Perfect Storm. Uh, commercial fisheries we use miles and miles and miles of lines set with tens of thousands of baited hooks, usually targeting large fish like swordfish or tuna, or even in some cases, uh, sharks. Now, our long line methods are not near that long, nor extensively baited, uh, or set out near for as long a period of time. Commercial fisheries could set them out for uh, 24 hours, even 48 hours, depending on, again, how long that line actually is. If it's miles of line, you can imagine it take them just as long to haul it as it was to set it. So these can last for a long, long time. But the idea is still the same. You're setting thousands of hooks out in the water to try to get back as much return as you can um, from those hooks. And with our method, uh, that's what we see as well. Although our lines are only set out for about an hour or so because unlike commercial fisheries, we're not setting out to harvest these animals. We're setting out to catch them, work them up, and then release them again in as good a condition as, as we possibly can. And for that reason is why our long lines are short, our hook numbers are small, our hook size is even small, and our wait time between those setups is about an hour or so. Now, long lines can vary widely depending on what they're targeting, um, what they're being used to target at. If it's like a pelagic long line, it might be set up with floats, so it hangs down in the water column. Or for ours, which is a bottom long line, meaning it just lays on the bottom and is stretched out, marked at either end, um, so we can actually see where the line actually is. Our long lines reach about 640 feet in length and can each accommodate uh, 22 baited hooks. Uh, at each end, there is an anchor. So like this, a small Danforth anchor set with a chain, tied on with a bowline at the end, our old friend the bowline knot. And then the line is coiled nicely in these baskets so it comes out nice and it goes back in nice, preventing some sort of rat's nest or horrible thing <laughs> like that if the line is being set out, you want it to be coiled as nice as you can. The line itself is a hard braided lay, so it does not float and it's very, very tough and great against abrasions, which is good around here. Think about rocks unseen lobster traps, stuff like that. We do not want our lines being severed on the bottom. It also keeps them out of the range of wayward um, Miami boaters, of which you can see there are very few today, but that's good. Um, our line is, is marked with knots, and they're painted with knots, so they tell us what goes in or around these knots. On each end there's a red knot, so end right here, and the other end as well has a red knot, and that is simply to attach the float line to. Like I said, this lays on the bottom, so if we just put it on the bottom, we would not know where it is, so we need to mark it with some sort of marker on the top so we can retrieve it and be aware of where that line actually is located. So we have our research float with a line. Again, our old friend the bullen comes in handy with the bullen and back to a tuna clip. I've talked about tuna clips before in previous um, videos, but a tuna clip is a device you find in a lot of fisheries. It's just a very simple device, but is very effective at attaching uh, gear to each other. So in this case, we use it for the, uh, the long lines themselves. So once the line is attached to the float, the anchor can be deployed, the float goes out, and then the line itself starts paying out of the basket. This is a multi-person job. So if you ever find yourself setting long lines, you're, not, you're probably not gonna find yourself alone doing this. It would be, uh, I wouldn't say impossible, but it'd be extremely challenging. So bring your friends along when you're doing long lines, but make sure they are uh, well-trained and know what they're doing. Uh, this is very, very helpful in all field work. As the line goes out, you start to see in ours these series of white painted knots. These are where our baited uh, hooks are going to go. So over here, I have our Ganjin bucket. Again, with any sort of lab or research uh, group, you're going to find some variation probably of this. How to store your Ganjins, how to store your lines, how to store your gear. It all kind of comes down to what works best for you and what's been working well for that lab. In our case, a modified cooler with a, a setup in between to hold all the lines makes this extremely easy to just pull out and grab our Gangens. So this is a Gangen. Uh, sometimes you'll, refer, you'll hear it referred to as a snood, uh, especially in Canada or somewhere towards the, uh, the Pacific greater Northwest. But in the end, it's all the same thing. It is a single baited line. So we have on here our little circle hook. 
this is a, what's called a 13 aught. That is the size. So we have 13 aughts and 15 aughts. And on our previous video, when we talked about drum lines, we talked about 16 aughts. So the aught size is the size of your hook. These are little hooks though. So we're using them to target smaller sharks or younger age classes of sharks that we have around here. Again, we have our leader and our monofilament. And again, back to our old friend, the tuna clip. Now the tuna clip is gonna go on our lines here, not on the knot itself. We do not want that because the line is going out, although the line is going out very slow, it is almost challenging to get that thing on there while the line is moving. So what we have is a space between the knots. So anytime that line, that knot goes past, tuna clip goes on and the baited hook goes right back out off the stern of the vessel. The knots here are primarily used to create a barrier just in case something grabs this baited hook. It cannot drag this hook line into the rest of them. You can imagine, imagine a terrible situation where you have like a wayward black tip or a bull shark that just pulls the gangen and wraps itself around all the other 20 some odd gangens that are coming uh, behind the line. So these knots act as a barrier or a break to keep the uh, gangen from going out any further than it needs to. That's why these knots are there. Once you reach the, uh, the end of the uh, the end of the line, if you will, the end of the line. We have another uh, red knot, another set of floats. They go out, then the anchor is set and released, and voila, you have yourself set a scientific long line. So a real benefit of the long line is the ease of construction. I mean, it is simply a line, some knots, an anchor, a float, and some hooks. But on the other side of that, there is a lot of hooks and a lot of line to have to rig up and put together to make a, an effective long line. So that is kind of a plus and a minus with this method. Um, a real minus against the long line itself is simply the length of the line or the, the hook that's involved. You imagine this is all the, all the length the shark has to swim around. So it is imperative you want to reduce uh, more morbidity and mortality on your lines, your long lines, to have uh, very quick checks. So an hour or so is fine if your length is this long. Um, if your gangen lengths are a bit longer, you can probably stretch that a little bit more. But again, that kind of depends on what kind of air animals and sharks are in the, are in the area. Um, so having these little short little lines is kind of a mark against the long line uh, in general. Uh, the long line can be set uh, with a bare minimum of crew, although the caveat is that crew must have a certain amount of skill set bringing, uh, they're bringing with them to the table. Because of all the moving parts, line, the hooks, the speed at which the line is set, hauling in that line, taking off all the hooks themselves, rebating all the stuff, the whole moving machine. Um, being comfortable, being familiar with this and working well together um, is a bit of a requirement. So you could have a dozen or so people working with you, but if none of them really know what they're doing, then that amount of people really isn't going to do you any favors. Having people that know what they're doing and being comfortable and skilled with this uh, can really make this go a long way and also make it much, much more safer and uh, much more successful for your long line sets. So in summary, uh, long lining is a very useful method in shark research and in fact it's probably one of the most common methods found in this field. Uh, part of that is just the versatility of it. I mean you have it can be long, long, long lines, short, short, short lines, hundreds of hooks, dozens of hooks set at the surface or midwater or bottom and can target a wide range of species, making this an extremely um, successful method of shark research. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed it and uh, thank you for tuning in. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. Today we're gonna talk about long lining. <laughs> <laughs> and it's tied off to the, uh, the main line itself, this car. <laughs> found a useful method. So in summary, long line is a... <laughs> Stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs>